late winter into early spring is the time to prune our ornamental trees and shrubs as well as our small fruit and tree fruit crops. Like many fruiting plants, hardy kiwi are pruned to maximize fruit production. Pruning is also necessary to establish a strong framework for the fruiting vines to grow on, and it also balances the vegetative growth versus fruit production. Now, kiwis are very vigorous growers, and they can produce so much foliage that it creates a very dense canopy, and when that happens, we have less air circulation, which increases the possibility of having disease. It also reduces the amount of light that can penetrate into that canopy where the fruit and flower buds are set, so therefore it reduces the fruit formation as well. Hardy kiwi plants have separate male and female plants, and the two are pruned differently because they have different functions. The male plant is grown to pollinate the female plant, and so we want as many flowers to be produced on our males as possible to increase the pollen count. So we wait and prune that after flowering has finished for the season. Now the females are pruned twice a year, once during the dormant season and then again in the summer. Now we established our plants last year and worked on uh, establishing a nice trunk. The trunk will extend from the ground and we trained it up a bamboo pole to the center wire of our T-bar trellis. Now you can see I have a second uh, vine climbing up here along the trunk and uh, we only want one trunk, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that back to the base and remove that. Now once the uh, trunk reaches the, the center wire, we're gonna have, allow it to branch and have two arms, one growing in either direction along that center wire. Now these arms are called our cordons. And then on the cordons, you can see, there's some shoots that are growing out along there. These are our lateral branches. This is where the kiwi fruits are going to be produced. So as we train our female plant, what we want to do is establish a nice even distribution of these fruiting canes or vines and maintain a nice open canopy as well. So I'm going to begin by pruning, identifying which canes I want to keep. So for this nice even distribution, we want our canes to be separated by about six inches and then alternating sides of the, of the uh, arm and the trellis. So our first lateral is growing towards the east and then six inches down, I have another one growing towards the west. And then again, six inches, one growing to the east. And as I move down closer to the end, I have two that are very close together. And this one to me looks a little bit stronger. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one back the base. Now at the center of my trellis I have two more and they're both also on the east side like this one but there's a good foot distance in between those so I'm going to go ahead and keep this but remove this one because they're very close together again. And now we have a very nice even distribution of canes along our cordon. And once we have that what we're going to do is head back or cut back these laterals to eight buds. And we do that by counting the buds starting at the cordon and moving outward. So I have here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight buds. And I'm gonna make the cut just above that eighth bud. Now we wanna do this for all of the canes growing laterally along our cordon. Now we can look back at one of the lateral shoots I cut and you can see the buds along here. This bud will open up as the growing season progresses and produce a new shoot and that's, those are the shoots that will bear our fruit for this season. And as these emerge and grow, we're going to train them to grow perpendicular to this cordon and train them out and over the wires. And here they'll just drape down to the ground. I did mention they're vigorous growers. Uh, once they reach the ground, that's where our second pruning will come in for the season. Now sometimes you might notice some really short little branches growing along your cordon and they have a tight clustering of buds. These are called spurs and they're very fruitful. So if you see these, you wanna go ahead and leave them in place even if they disrupt the distribution of your lateral arms.
this is also the time to prune our blueberry plants and I'm very excited because this will be the first season that our young plants will be allowed to produce a crop. Now if we had an older plant we'd use a similar cane replacement style of pruning where we take out about one third of the oldest and largest canes which allows younger shoots to come up and replace those. But since we have young plants I'm just going to look for anything that's damaged crossing or growing through the interior of the plant. And I have a good example of a crossing branch here. This one comes up and it's crossing a number of different branches in several places as it goes up. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut that one right back to the base and I've opened this side up a little bit. I also have this branch here which is growing right through the center of the plant. So I'm going to reach around and cut that one off at the base. And this is a really nice blueberry plant. It has a great structure. You can see how it's fairly open in the interior. That's going to allow air to circulate through the plant and wonderful light penetration.